Okay, so the next uh, exercise after just doing the um, up and down from the root of the five chord would be to start a descending scale pattern from each subsequent note of the scale starting with the root of the five chord. Again, we're in the key of E flat major, so B flat dominant seven is our chord. And you can think of these patterns over the two chord or the five chord. So the patterns would start on the on the root of the five chord. So again, if I count that in, two, three, four, one, two, three, and ends on the and of three. Again, the and of three and the and of one are the hip sounds to end the phrases on. Next subsequent note of the scale from B flat is C. Well, C is a non-chord tone. Um, we're looking for B flat, D, F, and A flat as our uh, chord tones for this chord, B flat dominant seven. So C being a non-chord tone, what this does metrically is it puts the B flat in the wrong place. Two, three, four, one, and. We don't want that B flat on the end of the beat, we want it on the down beat. So I have to put an extra note in between C and B flat. The obvious choice is B natural. So it sounds like this, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and. I could also go chromatically from C up to D, which is also a chord tone, and that would put D on the following beat. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four. The next subsequent note of the scale is, in fact, that D, and if I come down the scale, no chromatic passing tones needed because I'm starting right on the chord tone. Two, three, four. Next note of the scale up from the root is the fourth note up from that this B flat root, E flat, the actual tonic of the key we're in, and D is the closest chord tone. So I could, since I'm a half step away from it, put the note that's a half step on the other side. That's called enclosure. Very common device. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and. I could also move chromatically from the fourth note up to the fifth of the chord by introducing a passing tone, the flat five or sharp eleven, whichever you want to call it. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and. So the exercise in time will sound like this. Two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, second note. The alternative from the third. Here's from the fourth. From the fourth, the other way. Fifth. Sixth. Seventh. next thing you might do with this very same exercise is take the same exercise, start every uh, phrase you play on beat two rather than beat one, and it will just change the endings. So you might have something like this, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and, let me play that again, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and again, <laughs> one, two, and three, and four, and one, and, there I got that note, second, two and three and four and one and, or from the second and one, two, three, four, one, two, three and, from the third, two and three and four and one and, from the fourth and one, two and three and four and one and two. From the fourth, the alternative method, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three and, again, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, the fifth, two and three and four and one and two and three and four, one, two and three and four and one and two and three and from the seventh, two and three and four and one and two and three and from the root. So if I count that one, one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and. Now if you 
do the same exercise starting on beat three, the endings will be the same as they were when you started on beat one. When you do it starting on beat four, they'll be the same as the endings were starting on beat two.